Hi folks. Uh, what we have here today is hopefully a return to picking videos being a more frequent thing. This is a U-change cylinder. Uh, you may have seen these a few other places before, uh, but they're kind of rare in the wild. And um, uh, this particular version is uh, out of production, but really they just changed the uh, markings and logo. Uh, this was originally uh, designed uh, by the U-Change Lock Corporation of Oklahoma City, kind of like the uh, stamping there suggests. It's actually still produced, uh, but the company has changed its name to Security Solutions USA, and they've uh, changed the markings from this fairly simple uh, roll stamp to a uh, sort of nice, modern, rounded-off logo. Uh, so this is actually, uh, f at this point, fairly old, uh, uh, key-changeable or user-programmable lock uh, design, uh, in some ways analogous to the uh, Schlage Secure Key or the Quick Set Smart Key and that sort of thing where it's basically, uh, if the owner needs to change the key, they take the current key, uh, they put it in, turn it uh, 90 degrees, then there's a tool that you insert into that slot there, uh, then you would remove the existing key, put a new key in, take the tool out, and turn it back, and now it would operate with the new key and not the old key. Uh, so the idea there is for people who need to change uh, to rekey their locks fairly frequently. It's sort of a cheaper and faster solution than having to have a locksmith come out and re and change all of your uh, locks. Um, and it's really kind of aimed at uh, an organization or a uh, property that's large enough to need that sort of capability, but small enough that it doesn't want to invest in, say, a, uh, a large master key system or a master keyed removable or interchangeable core system. Um, now the real, and that bit is actually very, uh, the mechanism is actually very clever for that, but it unfortunately is not terribly pick resistant as we'll see. So it's got this nice, pretty wide open keyway here. So I'm gonna use the uh, full size Peterson pry bar, get it set up in there. And we're gonna use the full size uh, Peterson short hook, Let's see 23 thousandths. And just going to reach in there and pin one is springy. Pin two is springy, pin three, nice and stiff, gives us a good click. Pin four is springy, pin five is nice and stiff, gives us a bit of a click. And back to the front again. Pin one is stiff, little click. Pin two, little click, pin three, pin four. And there we go. We are unlocked. Uh, so now that we've unlocked it, we're going to uh, get our picks out of the way. Get our pinning block up here and get a screwdriver out. And we've got the key so we can lock this back up. So first thing to do uh, normally, you would not have to uh, disassemble one of these unless something had gone badly wrong with the uh, key change process or to repair it. Uh, they say, the official documentation, which is really quite sparse, says that uh, the only real maintenance that this needs is uh, occasional lubrication with uh, WD-40 or any sort of 
similar light oil uh, once every five to ten years, which uh, I have my doubts about that, and you really should not be using WD-40 in a lock, uh, since it tends to dry out and form that sort of horrible thick gunk that uh, you see people like me always scraping off of uh, locks. But anyway, uh, it is what it is. I personally uh, just uh, spray a bit of uh, Houdini in there, or a similar light oil. Uh, anyway, so we've got that off, and you can already see this is a very, very large plug. Uh, let's see if I have anything similar around here. Uh, you know what, here is a, a Lockwood Australian oval cylinder, and already you can see that that plug is larger than the uh, tailpiece on that. Uh, here is a Corbin Ruswin, or a Ruswin uh, master ring cylinder, where even, uh, where thankfully <laughs> this uh, plug is slightly smaller than the master ring. So, pretty big. Let's get the key in there, and from the back, you shouldn't really see much of anything happening there. Except that you can now see the tip of the key there, and, uh, you know, it turns. And that's it. So, we're going to turn this like that. Now the other problem is that because this uh, plug is so large, I don't actually have a plug follower that fits this. Uh, what I do have is the uh, storage tube from my HPC hollow follower set, which is almost, but not quite, large enough. But it's enough to hold the driver pins in. Keep them from spraying everywhere. So we're going to set that aside. And here is our plug. So you can see it's in the unlocked position. All five pins are at the shear line. And we can remove uh, the key. And all of the pins will drop back down. And notice that all of the pins actually drop down to roughly the same level, uh, which is unusual for a lock that does not have a completely flat bidding. And exactly how that works we'll see in just a second. I'm going to drop one of these uh, driver pins out for you because there are driver pins in here unlike uh, a quick set smart key cylinder. So here is one of the driver pins. You can see fairly wide diameter. And there is the spring. Much narrower diameter spring. And it's basically the same in all of the other uh, chambers. Just five standard. Uh, although large diameter uh, driver pins. And now, let's get in here. We need a slightly smaller pair of tweezers. And really, all of the magic happens inside the plug. So first thing is we have this outer plate that we can just pull off. There's nothing holding it in. It has these two little studs that line up with this groove in the side. And then it's just this sort of hat-shaped plate. So we'll put that down in there. And then we're going to slide that pin out so that we can remove it. And this is what actually, this is really where all the magic happens. So. This pin isn't a single solid piece. It's actually three parts. 
four parts. There's a spring inside that you can't see. Um, but when you uh, insert the change tool into the plug, what happens is it actually pushes this side plate away from the pin, and this inner pin then just pushes out under spring tension, and when the uh, new key is inserted, it just pushes that back to the right height, and then uh, when you remove the uh, change tool and relock the cylinder, this gets pushed back in to lock it in place. Now let's see if I can do this without spraying pieces everywhere. So I'm going to hold this in. There we go. There's that uh, locking pin out of the way. And now we have the inner pin with these little grooves in it. Those grooves don't provide any pick resistance. They don't actually engage with anything outside of the pin structure, uh, the key pin structure. And there you can just see the spring sort of sticking out a little bit. And it's kind of in there pretty good, but you can see the end of the spring. So basically, uh, that locking pin will engage with one of these grooves to hold it in place. Uh, now, that actually great concept for how to execute a key change, uh, a, a key programmable or key changeable lock, but uh, doesn't offer any real pick resistance. Like uh, I would say that this is equivalent to trying to pick one of the old uh, milled plug quick set cylinders. It's very easy, all standard pins, no real uh, security pins or anything. And this very fancy key pin design doesn't uh, offer any real pick resistance either. Basically just what happens is when the plug is turned to 90 degrees, these side plates line up with the driver pins so that these are able to retreat a little bit. The change tool pushes them up and pushes that uh, locking pin out of the way so that the inner key pin can drop out under spring pressure. The new key pushes it to the appropriate height, like that or like that. And then, the, and then when you remove it, the driver spring, uh, the driver pin and spring will push that side plate in, which then pushes that locking pin into one of those grooves, hopefully. But, of course, as it wears down, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit there, uh, as it, as all these parts wear down, uh, those little fins between each uh, adjustment point are going to round off the tip of that locking pin is going to round off or even break off and so a bunch of locksmiths who have worked on these in the field have told me that they would get huge numbers of service calls for these when uh, that locking pin would not quite grab on or not seat correctly uh, or worn keys and worn pins would result in that locking pin trying to engage with one of the flats between the two grooves and it wouldn't lock in place securely. And so what would happen is uh, just over time, just wear and tear on this lock and dirt and debris working their way into these uh, uh, slits or serrations in the key pin would cause it to uh, disengage and drop out and lose its programming essentially so that the correct key wouldn't actually work anymore. Um, in which case really the thing that would happen is just like any other uh, key cylinder, uh, just like any standard cylinder, uh, you might be able to pick it at that point or more likely you'd end up having to drill it and this plug 
is really just uh, uh, chrome or nickel plated brass. It doesn't have any special anti-drill protection. Um, so it looks funky. It's a cool idea, but it does not offer uh, much in the way of real security. Its main advantage is key control. Uh, these blanks are not easy to get. They're not really available from aftermarket manufacturers, and uh, the factory is fairly strict about not selling them to anyone that isn't a registered end user. So, you know, um, really cool idea, but don't don't use one of these if you need a lock that is reliable or uh, secure against any sort of uh, surreptitious or covert entry. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So until next time, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you have uh, have fun, happy picking, and happy holidays.